Well, it only took two years, but here's your video on Libros's harmonic and percussive source separation. This follows the example in the Labrosa docs, which I included in the description if you want to follow along. I should also point out that I'm not an expert in any of this, so if you see anything wrong in the video, I'll include any corrections in the description. I also included some supplementary material if I explain something poorly. A harmonic is a multiple of a fundamental frequency. When we hear a complex waveform with tone, we're also hearing these multiple intervals of vibration that are going throughout our bass frequency. Transient events are these non-repeating, sudden bursts of energy caused by a change of state in the waveform, which take up the majority of our percussive elements like drums. In order to separate these two from a complex waveform, Labrosa applies a method called median filtering. When we look closely at a spectrogram, harmonics form horizontal ridges while percussive components form these vertical bands. If we were to run an algorithm that emphasizes one while suppressing another, we can achieve the desired effect. Median filtering is actually used in a variety of other applications. If you're a photographer, you may have heard of this before, since people use this same concept to remove image noise. The idea is we're replacing a signal with the median value of a window that surrounds that signal. So in other words, we look at a single frame of audio, get the median of the surrounding audio frames, and apply that to our current frame. This helps cut out the outliers of our signal, which are typically associated with transients. Running this method across each frame would eventually suppress all of the outlying amplitudes. Performing the opposite process, we can suppress the non-outlying values, which would give us a more isolated percussive track. Okay, so a lot has changed in the past two years for Labrosa, meaning my previous beat prediction video is already out of date. This time around, I'll be using Python 3.8.3. As always, your mileage may vary if you're using a different version of Python, a different operating system, a different version of Labrosa, different versions of the packages that Labrosa relies on, the list goes on. The, the best part about programming is it's 50% setup and 50% fetal position when you're neck deep in import errors and deprecation warnings. So just bear in mind that I won't be able to help you with all of the setup compatibility issues. And if you think there's something wrong with Labrosa itself, you can always use the Labrosa GitHub issue tracker. I'm going to start with setting up and activating my virtual environment to keep Librosa and all the respective packages local to this folder. Next, I'm going to install Librosa and the sound file packages. And we're going to go ahead and write our main.py file here and load uh, both Labrosa and sound file as SF into our main Python folder. So sound file is a package that takes care of all of the reading and writing of our wave files. This process completely replaces the FFmpeg writing that Labrosa.writeWave originally relied on. There is no MP3 export, but supposedly Soundfile will fall back on the audio read package to output MP3s. For now, I'll be exclusively working in Wave. I'm going to use Labrosa to create a Wave file with the provided example audio. Just like my beat prediction video, we will be returning the time series array and our sample rate once again. Then write the example to a WAV file using the output write WAV function. Now we'll load the wave uh, with sf.read. 
So this is using the new sound file functions that are available. And we are going to be reading in the WAV file into its own uh, variable here. The actual source separation is provided by Labrosa FX HPSS. This function automates the sample array conversion process. First, it puts the sample array into a short time Fourier transform. It then performs that HPSS process, giving us our two separated tracks and then it pushes it back through the inverse Fourier transform in order to write the samples to a wave file. So here we'll be getting back both our Y harmonic and Y percussive arrays, and we'll be writing those to their own respective wave files. Go ahead and run Python main.py and you will see that we have three files in our local directory. There you go, under default settings, the HPSS process has tried its best to separate the harmonic and transient elements of the original time series array. You can further tweak this HPSS process by including arguments that are listed under decompose HPSS. So for example, let's say we wanted to further isolate the percussive elements of our track. You can do this by providing a margin argument in the HPSS function. Uh, the first number being the margin of the harmonic median filter and the second being our percussive median filter, which we're going to bring up to five. And there we go, that is the entire HPSS process in Labrosa. So as you heard, you can still pick up some of the drums in the harmonic version and hear some of the tonal qualities muddying up the percussive track. Medium filtering is not a perfect system and it will vary wildly based off of the original mix and how you tweak your arguments. But in a perfect world, most people would probably say, I want to be able to separate the individual instruments in this waveform rather than the overarching harmonics and transients that exist in it. This would be a lot more useful for reverse engineering tracks where you don't have access to the original recordings. This is where something like machine learning comes in. This will most likely involve some sort of classifier that it can identify different instruments and grab both the harmonic and transient qualities of those instruments to put them in their own respective tracks. Of course, that goes way beyond the focus of this video, which is just code word for this shit is too complicated and I am not confident to teach it in any capacity. So that's about it. In the description, you will find everything I discussed in this video, as well as additional resources if you want to learn more. If you do anything cool with Labrosa or audio programming in general, don't be afraid to tag me on Twitter at Bike Hope you found this useful and uh, I will see you guys next time.